Chantal Maudit, the fourth woman who climbed K2, was a French climber. She had climbed six of the 14 8,000 mountains. Chantal reached the summit of those mountains without the use of supplemental oxygen. She died on the Lugeri, the world's seventh highest mountain in 1998. This is her story. Chantal Maudit was born on March 24, 1964 in Paris, France. At the age of five, she and her family moved to Safwa, where she discovered mountain hikes in the summer and skiing in the winter. She started mountaineering at the age of 15 in the French Alps after the death of her mother from cancer. Chantal spent her holidays in the Alps, where she made increasingly difficult ascents. Then she went on her first trip to South America, where she climbed in the Andes. In parallel with mountaineering, she studied and began her career as a physiotherapist. In 1992, Chantal decided to climb all 14 8,000ers in alpine style and without the aid of supplemental oxygen. She went to the Karakuram and climbed K2, one of the toughest 8,000ers. It was the fourth women's ascent of K2. The previous three women ascents were made in 1996 by Wanda Rutkiewicz, Liliana Vaga, and Julie Tullis. Liliana Vaga and Julie Tullis died on the descent, while Wanda Rutkiewicz died on Kenching Chunga in 1992. Chantal reached the summit on August 3, 1992, where the Abruzzi fell. On the descent, she was pinned by a storm near Camp 4. She had become snow blinded and was helpless. Ed Visters and Scott Fisher, two renowned climbers from America, were also on the mountain and making their own summit push. They gave up their own summit attempt and rescued her to safety. Next year, in October 1993, she climbed Shisha 14th highest mountain in the world. She reached the summit where the south face on October 4, 1993. That same month, she also climbed Choyo, 6th highest mountain in the world. Despite seven attempts to summit Mount Everest, she only reached the south summit in 1995. During that ascent, she collapsed and lost consciousness. She was dragged and carried all the way down from the south summit to the south coal like a sack of potatoes by Rob Hall and other climbers. In 1996, she went to the Himalayas again and climbed Lutsi, the fourth highest mountain in the world. During her ascent to the summit on May 10, 1996, she witnessed from a distance the death of five climbers on Everest passing Lutsi, on the other side of the South Curl. In his account of the 1996 Everest disaster and to thin air, John Krakower quotes Chantal is grateful for the 1992 and 1995 rescues and is mourning the deaths of Scott Fisher and Rob Hall, whom she deemed friends. Ten days later, Chantal climbed Manaslu, another 8,000 years in the Himalayas. The following year, she made the ascent of Kishervum II in Pakistan. It was her sixth 8,000 year. 8,000 year. She went to Nepal in 1998. Chantal and her Sherpa Ang Shiring were part of a Catalan expedition. They were attempting Dalugeri, seventh highest mountain in the world. They were at Camp 2 at about 6,500 meters above sea level. There was a period of extremely bad weather. 
Chantal and Ang Shering had been missing for several days before their bodies were found on May 13, 1998 in a tent at Camp 2. They were killed probably by an avalanche or stones while sleeping. Initially, it was difficult to find out the exact cause of their deaths. Their shelters had been in fort buried by snow. Ang Shering had been accompanied her on her ascent since 1993. Following her death on the mountain, Sherpas were hired to retrieve her body. It took 10 Sherpas to carefully maneuver their way down the slopes of Dalugeri with the body of Chantal Maudit. A rescue helicopter fetched up Chantal's body at the base camp and flew her to Kathmandu. Chantal's friends and agents of her sponsor received her body and later it was returned to France where the autopsy concluded that the cause of her death was a broken neck. Later, she was cremated in her hometown. The sheriffs who retrieved her body believed that Chantal and Ang Shering had not made a mistake. Good acclimatization, good choice of campsites, departures with favorable weather forecasts. They were in high spirits and excellent shape. Chantal, this time, as always, did everything necessary so that things would go well. Nothing strange happened up there. An avalanche began like plenty elsewhere at the same time. Chantal and Shering were hit, they were not lucky. Chantal took part in 18 expeditions participated in hundreds of well-known ascents throughout the world and she had been climbing for 18 years. Chantal was optimistic, adventurous, strong and determined, but her master word was prudence. Chantal believed no peak is worth dying for it, as too many other things entrusted her and incited her to come back down alive and take up with pleasures towards alternate horizons. When it was not the right time, it was not the right time. Chantal was captivated by the beauty of the world and she looked for it everywhere, every day. Up there, she expressed herself in the kingdom which she had made her own. She was sincerely happy there and perfect harmony with nature and extremely at ease. She loved incessantly. She was enthusiastic and joyful. She wanted to discover the world, the Andes, the American West, Thailand, the Alps, the Himalayas, and Antarctica, as long as she could climb, photograph, and share. It was in Nepal that Chantal found her happiness with magnificent mountains and a population that was just as beautiful. She felt so good in Nepal that she had learned to speak the Nepalese language. She had committed to the Tibetan cause. She had met Dalai Lama and Tibetan refugees in Dharamshala, India in 1997. Chantal always used to store a few books in her tents. She had a plan to save herself time to write a novel because she had a passion for words. That's why she tagged her tents with various poems. Her lover, Andre Welter, dedicated a collection of poems entitled Seventh Summit to Her. In honor of her generosity, her friends and family created a foundation to help needy Nepalese children, especially girls and those in need of schooling. The association Chantal Modit Namaste. Created by the association, the Chantal Modit School at Kathmandu now enrolls 200 children. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, 
please consider subscribing to the channel for more such content to come in the future.